Here with Cade Mooring to preview the 2018 Concordia baseball season, which is less than a few weeks away as we uh, record this interview. Uh, first off, we'll, we'll take a quick look back at last season, which was obviously a really fun one for yeah. this team. Uh, a lot of time, I think, has been uh, spent already kind of reflecting and discussing what Coach Dupick went through last season and, and what a special year it was for the program. Uh, for you personally, what, what were maybe some of the lasting memories for you and, and the, the biggest things that, that you learned through that season? Um, <clears throat> last year, um, I mean, I've been here since Coach Dupin's been here, so I mean, it's great. it was great to see the growth of the program, him turn around in just a few short years that he's here. And it was really cool to see that the, you know, the seniors last year, they really, they really bought into what he was preaching to us and really what he was trying to instill in us for, you know, for our program and where we wanted to be headed in the right direction. Well, there were many moments where, where Coach Duplick couldn't be there as far as practice and game preparation during last season with, with what he was going through. Why was this team so adept at, at kind of working through some of those challenges? Um, I think a lot of that, like I said, had to do with the seniors. They, uh, you know, once Coach, you know, told us that he he wasn't able to be around us as much because uh, of his treatments and stuff. You know, you really saw the seniors really take initiative. For you know, they really wanted to, you know, show to, like show Coach that like we could, without him there, we could we still knew what we needed to get done and take the right steps and get in there and really take an ownership of our process, the hitters and the pitchers as well. For so long in, in this baseball program, it was kind of about responding to a, maybe a disappointing season the year before in terms of wins and losses, but now it's a little bit about responding to success. Uh, how is this 2018 group using last year to try to springboard to even better achievement? You know, we knew we were where we were at last year. It was great. It was a great milestone for the for the program and for us. and. You know, now knowing what it takes to get there, you know, we know, we feel like we need, we know what we need to do in order to, you know, repeat and get back to, and you know, establish an elite program, winning program. But at the same time, you know, I think our hitters are, you know, especially since we lost, you know, some of those bats that I was saying, um, I think that. I mean, don't count our hitting lineup out. You know, we got some really good young guys that are looking to fill some really important roles, and as well as some, you know, young pitchers too. Um, but in that same, that same note, you know, we still know that we have a lot of work to do on both ends if we want to be, you know, one of the best teams in the conference. Well, it's your senior year, and, and Coach Dupic identified you as as someone who's had a really good off season. Mm -hmm. What was your plan of attack going into the off season and, and how have you implemented it? Um, you know, the off season, I think it all started at the end of last year. Um, you know, Coach Burry had connected with me asking if I, you know, would be interested in playing summer ball and it's something I've never really done because I usually, I go home and work and so, but you know, I kind of took like, I don't want to call it a leap of faith, but you know, I took a kind of a gamble and I went and played summer ball in Iowa. And I, you know, I stay with the host family, but I can accredit a lot of my off-season like successes to really getting a lot of <clears throat> a lot of innings and a lot of work in during the summer. You know, I'm not just going. I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun, but at the same time, you know, I was there to work on some things that I needed to work on, and I think you know, doing that has it translated well into the fall, and I think it's translating well now into the into the spring as we get ready for our next for our first few games. You. Uh worked alongside a lot of freshman pitchers last year that, that got a chance to throw a lot of innings. I'm, I'm sure a lot of times you're thinking that I, I would like the ball too, but uh, how do you embrace them and, and make sure that uh, that they know you want what's best for the team? Yeah, so, <clears throat> you know, that just goes, goes back to the culture that, you know, coach and, you know, the players that we've really instilled here. It's a we over me mentality, you know. It's great to have your own successes, but at the same time, you know, if there's guys in the lineup or on the pitching staff that are having, you know, more success than you, or they, you know, they're they've been great for us all year. You know, it's great to see them go out and still compete and still, you know, 
really give us a chance because when you know they take the mound or someone steps in the box like that, you know you still have all the confidence confidence in them in the world that you know that they're that they're going to get their job done. Well, knowing that the the bulk of those pitchers from last year coming back, how did how did that maybe impact to your the way you worked out and the way you got ready during the off season? Um, you know, knowing that we had a lot of really good arms coming back, and knowing that we were probably going to be you know a junior senior loaded uh, pitching staff, you know, um, it just really it puts a sense of competitiveness, and you know you go there to compete every day because if you want a spot, if you want to play, you know you got to bring your best stuff every day and you got to show coach that you deserve to be out there. There's probably never been a Concordia baseball team that's opened up a season with expectations as high as this when you're picked mm -hmm. first in the conference too. In some ways it's got to be a cool thing for the program, but how do you relish those enhanced expectations? I mean, <clears throat> it's coming off last year, you know, we still, you know, as a whole program, we still expect, expect, sorry, uh, to be the best team in the conference. But like I said earlier, we still have plenty of work to do, and we know that because coming off a conference championship, you know, teams the next season are going to give you, you know, they're going to put, they're going to put together their best lineup to beat you. You know, everyone's gunning for you because you're at the top of the list. So just really compared to, you know. Accept the challenges every day practices and really, you know, just compete with one another and help each other push each push each other to get better. Well, you already uh, mentioned a lot about, you know, losing several key hitters from last year's team. Uh, maybe that puts a little bit more of a burden on the on the pitching staff. But how do you guys, as a staff, feel about that? About the the, the hitters or yeah, and, and about kind of taking maybe, more of a yeah. hitting, more of an um, you know. We're we're really excited. You know, we're we're ready to accept the challenge as a pitching staff as a whole. You know, we got a handful of guys that you know that can really that some, got some really good stuff, got some really nice pitches. Um, and I think you know at times you know we may not have our best stuff all the time, but if we're out there competing, we're out there. You know, we're we're playing for each other. I think you know if you play the game the right way hard and you compete, you know it'll reward you. And same goes on the other end for the hitters, like. These young guys that we got, I think there's going to be some young guys in our lineup that are really going to, you know, they're going to open some eyes up this year. Obviously, you guys go into this season with more of a target on your back, but there seems to be a, a, a pretty high confidence level internally with, with the program. How would you assess where you guys sit with that from that confidence standpoint and desire to compete in your conference and, and nationally? You know, <clears throat> I think if you ask any guy in the program, you know, they everyone's gonna have the desire to compete and be the best in our conference, but you know, um, I just think that in especially these last few years, the culture that we've instilled here is, you know, compete in everything you do. So even though we we you know so to say we have a target on our back because we we're 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 defending conference champs, I think that you know we we still have a lot of work to do that we know if we want to stay at the top and if you know if, we're, if we expect to be at the top we still have to you know come every day 100 percent ready to you know just be ready to face the you know we're going to face some good teams this year you know and then there's some teams that we might not bring our a game with but you know if we just grind out you know the at bats the pitches the innings stuff like that i think you know the game will reward you for playing hard Okay, these are the, the quick questions now. What's your favorite app on your phone? Favorite app? Oh, uh, I'm pretty, pretty addicted to Twitter. <laughs> favorite snack or junk food? Uh, snack or junk food? I'm a big Doritos guy, I like Doritos. <laughs> Favorite professional sports team? It might be on your hat. But. No, I mean, yeah, I get that a lot. No, but I mean, I've always been a Cincinnati Reds fan, more of a, more because of Ken Griffey Jr. used to play there, but I know it's kind of a, my dad's like the Reds too, ever since he was a kid too, so. Well, you are from Arizona. What what do you miss most about your hometown when you're back at school? Uh, it's not humid back home. I don't like, I don't like the humidity. Um, and I'm a real big, I'm real big on Mexican food, so going home and having like real authentic Mexican food. It's, I like that. <laughs> How about somebody who's been a childhood sports hero for you growing up? Childhood sports hero? Uh, you know, 
probably sounds cliche, but you know, I'm gonna say like my dad. He's, you know, he's been my coach in every sport that I've done ever since you know T-ball. He's been there. We go down on the weekends, and he we throws 150 baseballs at me. You know, we just put in the work. You know, even when I'm from a young age, I've been. You know, he's just been always out there pushing me to get better, saying, you know, this is this is what you want to do. This is the work you need to put in, and you know, and I'm willing to help you every step of the way. Do you have any superstitions, uh, like before you take the mound or before you go out for an inning or anything like that? Um, superstitions, yeah, I, uh, almost always you'll probably see me wearing this undershirt. It's just, you know, it's another thing that I wear. It's just, and usually before every pitch, you might, you'll probably see me, you know, take a deep breath, take a step on the rubber, take a deep breath, and really collect myself and gather my thoughts before, you know, every pitch, so. What's your dream job? Dream job? Uh, you know, to throw a ball for a living. Uh, superpower that you'd like to have? Superpower? Uh, uh, shoot, I don't know. I'd say... I'd say super smart. Just so... I don't know. Not to say I'm not smart, but, you know, it's just... It'd be great to know more. Sure. What are a couple words that, that come to mind to describe Coach Dupe? Coach Dupe, uh, oh man. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a couple words to describe Coach Dupe, uh, he's, he's very competitive. I mean, you'll hear him probably, I don't know, I can't even tell you how many times I practice. He's all about, you know, compete, compete, compete. And I think that's great because he's, uh, you know, that, that just, drives us to be better but also you know he's a competitor he's he's a great he's a great mentor he's a great leader he's a great teacher coach you know I don't think there's enough words that you could you know use to describe coach Dubik and what he's done you guys have a really long ride to Tucson coming up mm -hmm. for spring break what do you guys do other than sleep to get uh, to keep from being bored <laughs> usually usually there's some outlets on the bus so we like to bring you know some playstation some tvs and stuff you know we'll play we'll play 2k stuff like that get some get some tournaments going on the bus keep guys you know into it keep the team keep the team morale up and stuff you know 24 hours on a bus is a long time so there's only so much you can do Last thing here, we have on your bio that you enjoy hunting, fishing, and mm -hmm. camping. Yeah. Where have you been that it gave you the best experience in regards to one of those things? Uh, honestly, I can drive 15 minutes up the road from my house, and I can go. I can do all three of those if I wanted to. But you know, You're talking in Arizona. Mm, or yeah, here? sorry, sorry, <laughs> in, sorry. Back home in Arizona. Yes, um, you know, because a lot of people they think of Arizona, they just think of the desert, Phoenix, and stuff, but. You know, I live 11 miles from the New Mexico border, up at 7,000 feet elevation. So, you know, real small town. Not, I mean, you know, people ask where it's at, and I just don't even bother to tell them because they're going to tell me, "Oh, I don't know what that is." And I'm going to tell them, "Yeah, exactly. I know that's why I didn't tell you." But, you know, like I said, I can drive 15, 20 minutes up the road and be go camping, hunting, or fishing. What do you hunt then? Uh, we got we've got deer, elk, uh, bear, mountain lions. Just, I mean, you name it. You've hunted bear. Before. I mean, no, I haven't hunted bear before, but you know, they're, they're, uh, we can we can buy our hunting license, hunting tags to go hunt them. And I got a lot of friends that bear hunt. Mm -hmm.